Welcome, bienvenue, hue, and thank you for watching CIBC and the Confederation Center of the Arts presents Feelin' Mighty Proud, sponsored by CAA. Hi, I'm Adam Brazier, Artistic Director of the Charlottetown Festival, and today I'm going to act as your guide as we travel across the island celebrating Lucy Maud Montgomery's most beloved character, Anne Shirley. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which we live and operate is the traditional unceded territory of the PEI Mi'kmaq. We're gonna share with you some selections from the Charlottetown Festival's musical adaptation of Anne of Green Gables, adapted for the stage by Don Heron and composed by Norman Campbell. Our journey begins just as Anne's did at the Bright River train station where Matthew Cuthbert is about to arrive to pick up the young boy that he and his sister Marilla have adopted to help out on the farm. Easy, Pearl. If you're looking for the 5.30 train, it's been and gone. Oh? Half an hour ago. But it's only 20 past five. If you're looking for the station master, he told me to tell you he's gone home. He told you to tell me? I suppose you are Mr. Matthew Cuthbert. <sighs> Mrs. Spencer told me what you look like. I was beginning to be afraid you weren't coming for me. The station master said the train was early because they had a new engineer on and he wasn't very experienced. Well, now, there must be some mistake. Yes. He said usually the 5.30 train is half an hour late. Regular as clockwork. But, uh, oh, if you hadn't come for me, I was going to walk down that track to that big wild cherry tree. See it? Oh, yes. And I was going to climb into that beautiful tree and stay all night. Oh, wouldn't that be lovely? Am I talking too much? People are always telling me that I do. Mrs. Spencer says my tongue must be hung in the middle. It flaps so. <laughs> if you say so, I'll stop. I can stop when I make up my mind. Although it's awfully difficult. Oh, no, no, no. You, you can talk all you want. I don't mind. Oh, oh, I'm so glad. Oh, it seems so wonderful that I'm going to live with you and belong to you. I'll let Marilla do it. I beg your pardon? Uh, oh, here, let me help you with your bag. Oh, no, I can carry it. It isn't heavy. It's an excruciatingly old bag. Thank goodness I'll never have to use it again. <laughs> Mr. Cuthbert? Yes? Which would you rather be if you had your wish? Divinely beautiful, or dazzlingly clever, or angelically good? Well, no, I don't rightly know. <laughs> Neither do I. But it would be nice to think you had a choice. <laughs> I'd like to add some beauty to life, said Anne. I don't exactly want to make people know more, though I know that is the noblest ambition. But I'd love to make them have a pleasanter time because of me. To have some little joy or happy thought that would have never existed if I hadn't been born. Welcome. My name is Christina and we are currently in Cavendish Prince Edward Island at Green Gables Heritage Place. This site is the original inspiration for the book Anne of Green Gables and we welcome roughly 200,000 people every year. There are many great things that you'll find in the house such as the raspberry cordial that is now on the second shelf as it should have been, not the red currant wine. You'll also find Anne's puff sleeve dress upstairs in her room as well as the pieces of her slate, the slate that she broke on Gilbert's head when he called her carrots. You'll never know what other great things you find at Green Gables Heritage Place. Once I thought I'd like to be a blossom growing on a tree, white and pink and lazy as can be. But I'd be king just in the spring, now I think it over, gee, I'm glad I'm no one else but me. If you sit around and find the world is gloomy and it isn't just your cup of tea, it's easy to imagine that it's rose and bloomy. You can think the things you want to be. So when all is said, 
But when there are battles to be won, be what you are, it's best by far. And soon you'll be in clover. Gee, I'm glad I'm no one else but me. Mm. Do you suppose that it could be the wounds of tragic destiny dripping from a bloodstained family tree? An evil spell that did compel the founders of this island to meet their doom and perish horribly. Picture now the vicious strife that started raging way back in the olden days of yore. Family with family in feuds and gauging Far as I can see, you've just cleared up the mystery of why your roads are red perpetually. The answer's found not in the ground, but in your imagination. Gee, I'm glad I'm no one else. Gee, I'm glad I'm no one else. Gee, I'm glad I'm no one else but me. But me. My name is Amy Beth McNulty and I actually played Anne Shirley Cuthbert in Anne with an E, the Netflix and CBC series. I'm so glad I, I get to make this video and I get to talk about this lovely character that had such a big part in my life and who I am today. Um, I actually got the books when I was nine. I got them from my mum for my birthday. Um, so she's been in my life for a long time and I played her from the ages of 14 to 17. So she really was there for all my pivotal and awkward moments and everything in between. But I genuinely couldn't be more grateful for the time period that I got to play her in. Um, just starting out that young, feeling awkward, I was so insecure in myself, not just appearance-wise, but also as an actress and as a young woman stepping out into the world and I didn't know what I was doing. Um, but I mean, Anne has so many beautiful lessons and so many wonderful storylines that I was so grateful that I got to be a part of bringing to mainstream media. Um, I mean, genuinely just feminism, racism, talking about those discussions openly and honestly, and the realistic part is even though this story was set in the 1800s, unfortunately these stories are more true than ever, and they are realistic, and they are true, and it's an awful thing, but I'm glad we got to bring that forward and start discussions and topics and teach all sorts of people all over the world, not just if you're a young woman, but a young boy, an older man, an older woman, anything in between, that you have the right to stand up and speak out when something is wrong. You have a right to be confident in yourself. You're allowed to go out in nature and take time. You don't need to rush every single day. So many of these lessons I learned playing Anne and I will take them into my day-to-day -day life forever. But this character means a lot. There's a lot of relatability for every single generation. You can watch it with a nine-year-old granddad and his five-year-old granddaughter, and they will both relate in some way or another. And that is such a truly, truly precious gift. And I was so fortunate to be able to be a part of this wonderful story. Thank you so much for letting me do this. Lots of love. Mwah. Bye. yoo -hoo! I know who that is. Come in, Rachel. I saw you driving by in the buggy, so I thought I'd come over. Whatever happened to the boy? We changed his mind. Uh, her mind. Uh, well, now, what I mean is, we wanted a girl, so we got one. Anne, this is Mrs. Lind. She's come over to see you. Isn't that nice of her? When I saw the pigtails flying by in the buggy, I knew you hadn't got what you expected. Well, well, well. They didn't pick you for your looks, that's sure and certain. Did you ever see such freckles and hair as red as carrots? How dare you call me ugly? How dare you say I'm freckled and redheaded? And? How would you like to have such things said about you? How would you like to be told that you're fat and <gasps> dilapidated and probably on a spark of imagination in you? Oh, I don't care if I hurt your feelings by saying so. I hope I do hurt them. You've hurt mine worse than they've ever been hurt before. And I'll never forget.
forgive you for it. Never, never, never! Did you ever see such a temper? Anne, you will apologize to Mrs. Lynde at once and ask her to forgive you. I could never do that. I'm sorry I vexed you, Miss Cuthbert. But I'm glad I said what I said. It gave me great satisfaction. Well, you will go straight upstairs to your room and stay there until you are willing to apologize. If you take my advice, me, who's raised ten children and buried two, you won't wait for anything. You'll go right outside and cut yourself a good-sized birch switch. Crab apple, Rachel? The woods call to us with a hundred voices, but the sea has one only. A mighty voice that drowns our souls in its majestic music. The woods are human, but the sea is the company of the archangels. You are at the Lucy Mount Montgomery birthplace in New London, Prince Edward Island. Every year we have come through this house an average of 13 to 14,000 people. Lucy Ma Montgomery was born in this house in the bedroom upstairs on November the 30th, 1874. This is the original house built by her grandfather Montgomery in the mid-1850s. She was only in this house about 20 months because her mother died from tuberculosis when she was 23 years old. So Lucy Maud had to move to Cavendish to her McNeil grandparents. Her wedding dress here, it's the replica of her wedding dress, and we have the original shoes. The Waterloo stove that's on display here in the kitchen is the stove that was mentioned in the Anna Green Gable book. You will see her original short stories and poems, her original handwritten letters, and some of her original books, and a lot of other history and information about her as well. Very well. Come with me. Matthew? Yes, Marilla? Would you come in here a moment, please? Oh, all right. I want you to see what a little discipline can do. Mrs. Lind, oh, Mrs. Lind, you have been wronged and I have sinned. My very soul. My name is Gracie Finley, and my first year 
plain Anne was in 1968. My name is Glenda Landry, and my first year in Avonlea playing Diana Barry was 1970. Ice cream is anything more delectable than ice cream. Why, even the most respectable eat ice cream. It's wonderful on a summer's afternoon in June. That trust that we had off stage, I think we were able to bring with us onto the stage as performers as well, and not just onto the stage, but into the whole rehearsal period. I honestly think that that trust is what develops truthfulness. I think so. I would like to think we were able to take that with our Anne and Diana and make that a very real thing to translate that trust into truth of character on the stage. And I think that's so important. And of course we had great mentors too, who were doing now, that. Do you remember? Well, Liz Mawson was on the stage and I remember exactly. the years of Barbara Hamilton, Peter Muse, the gorgeous, yeah. gorgeous Liz Mawson. Yeah. I remember Gracie, when they were working on the stage and we weren't called to the scene, mm -hmm. we would sit in the seats just to watch. We could tell stories forever, but... We could tell stories forever. Mm -hmm. But I honestly think <laughs> that my favorite memories mm -hmm. of Green Gables and of being with you at our beloved Confederation Center... Yes. ...was in our little dressing room. And it was so tiny, wasn't it? It was tiny, but we always insisted that's the one we wanted. And then we'd stand up when it was time for me to go onto stage. Right, right. And I'd say, love you, dear. And I would say, see you at Green Gables, Gracie. <laughs> because kindred spirits do not change with the changing years. They promise the eternal loyalty and love of kindred spirits. Promise? Mm -hmm. Like this, do it after me. I promise, I promise, to bear towards my bosom friend and kindred spirit, to bear towards my bosom friend and kindred spirit, an inextinguishable love, indistinguishable love. <laughs> I shall hold you to that promise till death. Yeah. Do us a part. I love you, dear.
When I was starting out as an actress, there weren't many roles like Anne of Green Gables to play. So when that came along, the thought of being the leading character in a story where the whole story revolved around you and your dreams and desires and your wishes and your successes and your failures as a character. That was pretty extraordinary and still is. And I think that is the power of Anna Green Gables and the amazing gift that Lucy Maud gave to everybody with her beautiful writing and introducing us to this powerful, beautiful young woman who has a huge impact on her own community. So I feel very, very grateful that Anna Green Gables touched my life.
Tolumu. I am Philip Brown, Mayor of Charlottetown, birthplace of Confederation. For me, Anne is larger than life, assertive, confident, and smart, with a strong connection to friends and family. These are characteristics reflective of where she comes from, Prince Edward Island. Growing up in Charlottetown, my memories of Summer and Anne were the thousands of Japanese tourists who visited Charlottetown with many wearing the straw hat and red braids. Now, as mayor, I see the economic impact Anne has brought to our great city with visitors eating at our many restaurants, strolling in our downtown, or walking along our beautiful waterfront. Anne brings Charlottetown to life during the summer months and into fall. The story of Anne with an E and the author, Lucy Maud Montgomery, continues to promote this cultural and literary icon around the world. Because if it hadn't been for Anne, Un, deux, trois. She was waiting at the station door Didn't have a tag describing just where she was headed for She'd have gone back C-O-D If it hadn't been for me If it hadn't been for you If it hadn't been for me If it hadn't been for all of us I wonder where she'd be Destiny that chose me to cultivate this pearl By devoting my attention to the needs of every girl For in the field of knowledge, when you plant a tiny seed The results can be tremendous, tremendous, yes indeed hadn't been for Anne. Why, she did it herself with imagination and determination. And though we all may have helped when we could, it was Anne who brought honor this night to her school. So, Hi, I'm R.H. Thompson, Robert to my friends. Uh, I really enjoy playing Matthew and especially working with A, B and G, which is how we refer to ourselves. A, B being Amy Beth McNulty and G being Geraldine James. Um, I never thought it was right to play Matthew. Um, I, in fact, I thought it was wrong. So even weeks into the production, I thought that I was going to be fired, uh, but I wasn't, so here I am. And it was a real pleasure to be part of that story. It's a very special story. Uh, it's a story, even though it was written 100 years ago, it's for our times. It's about a young woman who, through adversity uh, and abuse, continues with her courage and fortitude and intelligence and imagination to find a way to live in the world that is very positive for her and everyone around her. And that's the story of, of Matthew and Anne. I mean, both of them never expected to find, both are kind of lonely souls, and both of them never expected to find the kind of love and loyalty they found in each other. I mean, him at the end of his life, and she near the beginning of his life, and it was unlikely, and it was unprepared for, and there's suddenly, they tumble into this deep love for each other. 
And Matthew Morella, too, is also interesting. This is a, a, an older brother and sister who are at the end of their lives. They think, that's it, we know the pattern, we know how it ends, let's prepare the coffins and get into it. And then suddenly, her in the midst of her spinsterhood and Matthew in the midst of his bachelorhood, they are catapulted unexpectedly into parenthood. And the silence and routine of Green Gables has turned upside down with tears, with laughter, with young people, with all the rest of it. And so it's about a renewal of life. And in a way underneath the story of Anne and Anne herself is about renewal. When you come from such hardship, a fortitude and um, optimism and a drive and an intelligence and an imagination can keep driving you forward. That's why Anne is quite a special person. I think of Malala Yousafzai, uh, the Pakistani girl who was shot in the head by the Taliban because they didn't think young women should learn. And she ends up at the UN winning the Nobel Prize and speaking to the world. And I think of Greta Thunberg, climate activist, who I think she was 14 years old when she appeared at the UN in the climate conference. And she said to the world, how dare you? How dare you for making the younger people pick up this burden about what's happening to the climate catastrophe? And Anne is one of those young women. I'm a firm believer that the world will balance itself only after women have achieved half of the power in the world. So Anne and Greta and Malala are part of those young women who are bring us to that place. The words. Every story begins with the words. It is the carefully chosen and well-crafted words of Lucy Maud Montgomery that created the community of Avonlea and gave us her most beloved red-headed orphan from away. 
and surely continues to inspire, to offer us hope and imagination wherever her words are found. And of green gables never change, we like you just this way. And of green gables sweet and strange, stay as you are today. Though blossoms fade and friends must part, old growth songs we've sung. And of green gables in my heart, you are forever Some people go through life trying to find out what the world holds for them, only to find out too late that it's what they bring to the world that really counts. On behalf of everyone at the Confederation Center of the Arts and the Charlottetown Festival, we thank you for joining us this evening, and we look forward to welcoming you back to Prince Edward Island.